Go. Okay, cock and bull. My God, we just had to show in the evening, and we're back in the morning with the same people. This is like a marriage. I hate you, Amit, and I hate you, Silver. I want to see your faces. Thank God, Maruk has joined us. Something fresh and female. Before uh, me two cases smashed against me, I want to quickly just mention uh, to everybody who doesn't know uh, that Sadhvi Pragya, arguably India's greatest leader, intellectual and humanitarian, uh, has uh, said that cow urine has kept her happy. And I'm, I'm going to try it. I think you should not knock things until you try it. So who's with me? We try it. Let's see how our immunity goes up or down. And you know, so once the show's over, I'm off to find my local cow, and I'm going to wait till she pees on me, and then I'm going to give you an update, <laughs> guys. And I ask you all to do the same. No, no, Maru, please don't laugh. Please try it. Try it no, once. No. You have to find a desi cow first, Cyrus, and then you, there's a whole filtration process. Let me write this down. There are rules I didn't see. Uh, yes. So uh, the the cow has to be a desi cow of Indian yes. origin. Right. Of Indian origin, what and it should was... be on a certain feed, a certain kind of feed, and then you have to filter the urine fifteen times over in a desi cloth or in a muslin cloth. You can't just go around mm-hmm. and drink any kind of cow urine. I mean, I'll spend as much time waiting for my vaccination. Then, <laughs> what the hell is this? Fifteen <laughs> times with a muslin cloth, and you know, I mean, and the same cloth, I presume, again and again. I'm guessing, yeah. I the didn't know the cloth's immunity, immunity will be unbelievable. It's <laughs> <laughs> really going to be safe. Wow. So, I mean, can I even ask you what you think of what you reckon? Member of Parliament comes up with these kind of comments, and second time, in fact. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I think for uh, Pragya, um, uh, the basic thing was that she was missing. She was completely out of uh, action. She was missing, uh, and there was actually an award on her, ten thousand bucks. That's what a Congress leader said. That why don't we go around and find out where the member of Parliament is in Bhopal? You'd look under a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Cloth, of course. I'm sorry. The cloth was important. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I guess she was trying to divert attention. She obviously has a terrible record as a member of parliament. She's also had COVID apparently last year. Yeah. She December, had COVID yeah. symptoms uh, in December. She was admitted yeah. to a hospital, and now she's going around saying whatever she is. So, obviously, the best possible tactic for a politician: divert attention by giving some mumbo jumbo. About Ask, about two years back. About two years back, she had also, or maybe a year back, she had also claimed that uh, uh, cow urine cured her cancer, which is another thing she had. Mm. But but I just want to get back to this. So when she went to hospital, and I don't want to you know go on about this, did she take the cow with her? <laughs> because I can't see the doctor. Let's say Doctor Saxena comes there and says, "What would you like? Vaccine? Yeah, guy, pisab. You know, what I mean, I, how does that work? I I don't know." I think we should no. do a detailed press conference on this. I, Maybe that's where we'll kind of figure. I can understand. Are you really? Is that your thinking, or is that your uh, avatar that you want to project because you believe certain people like that kind of story, and so you don't you know, project it? But you, or do you really actually believe that? that that's the question. I, I, I think they actually believe that. I don't think this is just part of you know uh, diverting attention, and I think they actually believe it, and they're actually doing it. Some of them are actually doing it. They believe yeah, this yeah. is some old Ayurvedic science, and obviously, with due respect to Ayurveda, uh, this is some strange. <laughs> you have kinda... to say that. You, you must say that. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you had uh, your health uh, health minister, Dr. Harshvardhan, last year, actually give government money to have a study done on finding out whether cow urine was effective. So. obviously they believe this it's very easy to kind of start believing in your own delusions right i mean like it's gradual it doesn't like you know you you don't just go straight to like you know let's drink cow urine all things are good right it become mm-hmm. it's more of a like you know it's a step by step it's indoctrination right i mean like the way anything you get indoctrinated into like religion like uh, you know i mean a cult like anything of that it's the same kind of thing just step by step like you know there there are a they so simply just get you that point they count out to the more extreme forces in their tribe and just you know allow it to happen in spite of education the, and a certain I enlightenment are, I, i think there are some like that but i think that those people are generally careful about how they talk right like i mean like uh, no i mean like you know you, you look at uh, you know there are cynical members of these kinds of nationalist parties right who are basically just riding a wave i mean like you know I, i i do believe the prime minister and home minister are somewhat like that right i mean like i think that they are riding a wave in the sense that they're not as irrational as the people who follow them are so i i mean like i think that that is 100% there too 
Yeah, the, the only problem is that you vote someone into power who actually believes that cow urine will solve everything. You know, so, I mean, at the end of the day, there's a potential prime minister there. I mean, potential. So having said I mean, that, you could be... I mean, but in case of Pragya Thakur, uh, she actually had terror charges against her. I mean, first, you completely ignore that. You relegate uh, that. Uh, you Here, you're, uh, you know, legislating on laws that uh, you... Uh, any member of parliament with a criminal record will not be allowed to, uh, you know, uh, go into polls or actually get into the parliament. But you have a person with terror charges in parliament today. And, Maru, and then she has the right. To, yeah. No, sorry. Go on, go on, go on. No, she has the right to go on a public platform and espouse these kind of unscientific beliefs. And she does have a constituency that pretty much believes whatever she says. So, I mean, it, it's never ending. The mm -hmm. cycle is never ending. No, and, and she also has made many polarizing comments post the charges. It's not like that she's reined it in. Uh, in a couple of times, they've actually, High Kamal has actually, actually told her to back off because it's been so embarrassing. So that's the other amazing part, you know. I mean, I, I thought, you know, if you make polarizing co conversations and things like that, some sort of action will be taken because you're, in, you know, enticing people to misbehave. Um, but that obviously... In any part no, of India. absolutely. Uh, she has been at the uh, one of the leaders of the hate brigade, as I like to call them, and uh, she has been reined in. But obviously, she is popular. Uh, nevertheless, she has a certain kind of popularity, and uh, primarily, uh, you know, individual leaders in parties, especially members of parliament, also try to come up and do their own thing, despite the party whip or what the party high command says. They try to fight it and try and say whatever they want to occasionally because they need to keep their own domestic constituency happy. Uh, but with what Pragya is doing right now, clearly because of the kind of uh, bad press she's got for not being around and not helping anybody during the second wave, she's now started this whole thing. Of, uh, it's not true. That she's kept a cow outside the apartment. <laughs> said, Please use with care, with some cloth nearby as well. I'm sure. Yeah. You yeah. know what would be amazing? It would be great to hear the uh, so that Tamil Nadu minister who went off on Sadhguru, it'd be, mm. I'd love to hear what he had to say about something like this, right? I mean, like that was like one of the most articulate takedowns of of uh, the quote unquote Godman kind of stuff that we've been seeing off late, right? The and rationalist wave against uh, the spiritual wave. Yeah, yeah. It, it was in, it was a it was such a on point this, right? Like you know, because it's always been a question, right? I mean, like they talk about uh, property rights being abrogated when these temples are uh, being controlled by the government. And so it's always been like kind of a weirdish question. And I find it so, I, I, I've never seen such an articulate like takedown of that position that, yeah, no, of course the government has to do it. These temples were made by kings. Who else are we supposed to give? Are you just supposed to give it to whoever they want to, uh, whoever you want to? It has to be a government property thing. So it's, it was Actually, really- he's a, he's, a, he's a politician to watch out for. Yeah. A very, in a good way or a bad way? In a very good way. Yeah. In a very good way. This is rare to well say. Well-educated, <laughs> knowledgeable, articulate. And uh, I think a politician of the future. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope we see mm. more. Or maybe of that. not. He just have enough hate politics. Speaking <laughs> of which, um, Amit, why can't I become a politician? Because I rant every day, and everything. I, I, you know, I've got a lot of hatred in me, a lot of uh, viciousness yes, and do. malice, and I think I'm perfect. <laughs> I, I just I, don't I, have a cow. I have two dogs, <laughs> uh, and I may get a cat. Uh, Maruk, you're the expert, but here. Yeah, so does that count for I anything? Think, I think the future needs leaders like you, Cyrus. Yeah. Start a party. <laughs> Trust me. In due course of time, you will have a following. You yeah, already you... do, but I'm talking about the political kind. <laughs> you you the know, the only people I hate are police. Is that good enough? Because you have to hate a, a type, right? <laughs> so I'm going to my hate police phase. So is that so, okay, Amit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should make a political party like Abby Hoffman did, right? I mean, like the yippies. Mm -hmm. uh, they never fought an election, but they were a very big... Uh, uh, the guy. Lobby. Uh, yeah, like uh, the, the guy from the Chicago Seven, uh, that guy. So him and uh, so two of them, Abby Hoffman and the other guy who was his best friend. I can't remember his name offhand, but the two of them started this thing called the Yippies. It was like the 60s and 70s. They did these like bizarre sets of performance art in like you know middle of large cities and stuff like that to kind of get across like you know their point of view. You should start a Yippies type party over here for sure. Yeah, I, I don't try and fight elections. I don't I, think you want to see, do that. Every time we talk about whatever we're talking about, people think we're elitist and insensitive. Because because, you know, Cyclone is killing people, they're losing their home, blah, 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 and my worry is Wi-Fi. Fair enough. <laughs> so, but I'm saying surely there are people like me, because everyone should be selfish and think about their own tribe. So I get my tribe of elite together, and then it's a huge thing. Okay? It, it, you don't have to compare your pain with my pain, but everybody's got their own pain. That's it.
as long as but you have it's numbers. a fair point it's a fair, fair point. point i mean uh, people who are privileged often uh, no no i i seriously mean it because people who are privileged often feel that they don't uh, it's not that the people who, uh, who are elitist or privileged don't have issues they do Correct. but you might have a you might you'll have minority status in parliament in malba hill in the 90s before the bjp government having only one chauffeur was a big issue you know you look down upon and you know like, oh mrs mrs desa ke paas ek hi driver hai oh bloody hell yaar boom kar kids don't play with them ha huh? it, it very painful for i'm it correct me if i'm wrong bro come on you know? so all i'm saying is why be insincere and act that you really care about the farmers plight and obviously i'm not saying we are that insensitive that we don't but you don't really invest in anything So let's hmm. just talk about ourselves because they're the passion and will flow normally and correctly. And at least I, I think I'm... if you stand for elections, people will actually come out and vote, especially in Malabar Hill and South Mumbai. Malabar Hill, they don't vote anyway. They don't even know when the elections are. But maybe seeing you, they'll feel, oh, this guy really cares for our issues. Chauffeur, Wi-Fi. If you can involve the building WhatsApp, <laughs> because Malabar Hill building WhatsApp is very dynamic. Uh-huh. Every day they wish each other. They mention different gods. They talk about life in general. They send pictures of de- devastation. You know, they're touched by Israel's plight. Sorry, Palestinian plight in Israel. It's it's amazing. So, <laughs> you, really, I, your WhatsApp groups are touched by Palestinians' plights. My so WhatsApp groups up, yeah. are mostly like you know all the <laughs> pro-Israel BJP. Pro Israel. Yeah, that uh, they are. My group doesn't get into the politics too much. I, uh, not because they don't hate enough, but they're just huh. stupid. I don't think they know enough. <laughs> so there's no point, you know, going to a side and then uh, Yom Kippur is a restaurant. You know, you can't. It, it, it's so uh, they don't get into that. But but what I like is that little knowledge that the internet gives you. So everybody wants to be. Sh- part of the little knowledge so they throw the little knowledge out there and say it's coming from me see i care i know nothing about israel or palestine or the plight or the middle east or how that happened or whatever but you know i want to just put my name up there for you know being part of the movement that told you about this as well so, yeah yeah like that whole uh, hashtag black lives matter which was started by a whole number of people who didn't yeah. really understand that but yeah. were quite insensitive to issues happening in india No, no, no. They were all for Black Lives Matter and felt really bad and cried when they saw the nine and a half minutes of the guy kneeling on on uh, our friend and all that. But then they turn around and tell the son that she has to find a gory uh, wife, otherwise it won't yeah. work out. <laughs> <laughs> we we live in a different world altogether. Yeah, very. America, me, what's going on? That's what's going on. 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 That's Oh, really? It's not a terrible thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a scary thing for me to say because you're going to be recording from home tomorrow, and if you're in Ali Bagh, that would not be good. Yeah, mm-hmm. God, I mean, every time I say I'm going to Ali Bagh, you start having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, heart <laughs> attack. <laughs> you, you'll call up somebody and say, "Bank, bank, bank five." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, we digressed. Let's get back. Yeah. But so why can't we be politicians? Was... Honestly, at some point, some of us have to become politicians because we just sit there and we cannot identify with any of these guys. Yeah, I mean, Sadhvi is. I mean, on the forty-three degrees of separation. If I hung out with her at a cocktail party, what would we talk about except that I like animals? I can't think of another thing. You know, so then we we'll discuss. Maybe the champagne that you're drinking reminds her of you know what. <laughs> you drink. <laughs> Malok, you you really know my cheapness. Ah, beta, mix करके देना सबको. Guy तो इधर बाहर. Yeah, we've got a winner with this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> urine industry has been created. <laughs> so it's 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 not just urine, by the way. People there have been rising cases of people rubbing cow dung on themselves, thinking that it's a cure for COVID. So much so that doctors are having to warn against that also, saying it, guys, don't do this. It's I, there is no medical warning? advantage to this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but no, because they have to learn like cooking. Someone the, to learn a foreign language. They rub cow dung. I mean, it's something to do, man. I don't see what the big deal is, really. So no, no, some doctors because some doctors are saying that this could be the reason mm. behind the spread of uh, the new disease called black fungus or this, the cow dung, which is on the rise. Yeah, from mm. the cow dung. Is it black fungus, fungus a lung disease? infection? It... No, so essentially, what happens is that uh, uh, it comes from uh, some kind of inf- uh, bacterial infection, right? And so they're saying that because of the cow dung on you, and cow dung has all kinds of zoonotic uh, uh, organisms on it. So you might breathe that, or because it's on your body and you're sitting out in the sun and baking yourself. So the chances of contracting other kind of bacterial infections also rises. They haven't been able but, to. But figure you don't need a doctor to think that. 
if if yeah, you're going to spend yet. time with cow droppings without being a scientific uh, scientific mind i mean you would probably think it's a bad idea right and that you would get something from it well i mean you're yeah. in dung i mean like you know the that there, there is a there is a reference for the cow right which allows for its waste products to be used or people to think that they can produce and again like you know a cow dung is a fuel right so it's not like people in in rural india are not used to handling cow dung it's a fuel so i guess maybe it's it, not it, that it, it, it uh, sort of dies uh, properly you know before it becomes a fuel right doesn't it no you have to dry it and cake it, it and, like, and yeah, cake it and so by the time yeah. it's almost a solid piece and then you can make it into art yeah. but mm. the, the point being that you handle what it right? they show we discuss urine and dung Yes. Well, yesterday <laughs> yes, we were sir. talking yes, about yes, frogs. frogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're calling. I can't call her Sadhvi Pragya after this year. I mean, she's just one of us. <laughs> uh, sorry, Maruk. Just so you know, we had a long twenty-five-minute conversation about the frog that was stuck in Cyrus's toilet hey, in Alibaba. Hey, hey, Silvery had a parallel story to tell, so I'm not the only one. And uh, no, also. that's not it. Our sound editor, while editing the episode, told me, "Hey, man, this has happened to me in Goa. A frog was in my I'm like. I think all the people who have had these frog experiences are at IBM." Tell Sadhvi Pragya to also check out frog urine because obviously that's a very prevalent condition in all parts of rustic India, and maybe that's an easier way to access uh, some cure because all you have to do is sit on the pot. It's that same time of the day, and then you know, hopefully that uh, emission happens between both parties. <laughs> Instead of froggy, froggy, may I cross your golden river? It's like it's well, my golden river and froggy, all the best. Sorry, Maruk, intellectual property. I know gone exactly. Out. Yeah, <laughs> we, we bring Maruk we on. We nearly had a sponsor <laughs> until this one. <laughs> Yeah, poor thing. She <laughs> wanted to lecture us about uh, uh, the wildness of Indian politicians. But, uh, no, no, that... but uh, uh, talking about cow dung, uh, what was kind of reassuring? I don't you know. You can't beat him, uh, join him. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that at least uh, people like Akhilesh Yadav were actually calling it out? Uh, you know, uh, this whole thing of we must also understand that these kind of stories are highlighted by the western press i mean it's uh, gleefully they put out stories after Why not? stories it it might just be one incident there are enough quacks in the us and in europe also it's not just in india and i'm not i'm i'm not discounting what's happening here you're sounding a bit like kangana you know i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> i'm saying there are all kinds of, but at least people from uh, uh, the political class are calling it out there was a time when they would actually stay away from commenting on such issues because it would hurt sensitivities of a certain kind uh, you know a certain section of their constituency now at least they're coming out and saying that what is this this is unscientific it doesn't work so there is some hope somewhere but the funny part was that uh, there's one center where this whole cow dung uh, therapy is happening in gujarat which is right opposite a vaccine center a play a facility <laughs> where a vaccine is being produced or uh, right now being worked on so you know he hey, really work on Maruk, that god that, that's great marketing i'll tell you why because every time you go there like my mom had to go three times old lady and all that you go there or there's a big line and it's and they say no vaccine available or out of stock or whatever then you obviously go to the next option is this just human nature <laughs> no no this is a facility where they're actually making the vaccine not uh, inoculating oh. people okay how sad oh. yeah so but, but, but they can use help from opposite of the road <laughs> 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 wow, it's amazing. But what if it's true? After all this cynicism from us, what if it turns out that you know it's a miracle liquid? You know, <laughs> urine is like water of the twenty first century. Just, yeah, I've been yeah. hearing it's a miracle liquid since I was four years this old. Muraji Desai offered. Yeah, it my four. My, yeah, the, like you know, it was literally when I was four years old. My first trip to India when I was a kid in the U.S. I was told that uh, I was told about Muraji Desai and drinking urine. And uh, would you like some? Was drinking his own me. urine. Huh? Yeah, believe, yeah. Again. That's very important, yeah. right? Yeah. Maruk, you're the expert. I've told. So, <laughs> <laughs> drinking, drinking somebody else's urine is some sexual perversion. Drinking your own <laughs> urine is for health. Am I right? <laughs> I deserve answer. my comments. <laughs> There's a story about jellyfish. Somebody was saying that if a jellyfish stings you, yes. you you pee yeah. on the wound. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you it, have it, pee it on your leg. It does not. Your... It does not work. It does not. You've done oh, it. That's a myth. Or? No, it's okay. a myth. It's a myth that's been around for a long time. It's a very common myth. Uh, basically, if you pee on your leg when after a jellyfish has stung you, you still have a jellyfish sting, which with pee on your leg now. <laughs> that's the only difference. <laughs> it's, like a, it's just a bucket up, basically. Uh, yeah. No problems now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but what works is uh, just what works is vinegar. 
I just uh, where are you going to find vinegar? You're on a beach. Uh, listen, I I just saw this on a quiz show where they were kind of, kind of talking about this, and I found out about this at like in the last twenty days. Uh, is when I found out that jelly uh, that actually urine does not work because it's so ingrained, right? I mean, like we yeah. always have heard this that you go to a beach, somebody pee, uh, and then there was that Friends episode which we've all seen like a hundred yep. times, yep. right? Mm. And so that kind After of reinforced it as yeah, well. Friends is the next uh, best thing for medical <laughs> knowledge option. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're doing a reunion also, so we yeah. might yeah. just yeah. get some more yeah, knowledge. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I saw that also this morning. I actually wa- I was very disappointed that it's a reunion, as in like they're all just getting together and talking about the show rather oh, than yeah. like. Doing like a twenty years later oh, thing. Yeah. I thought it. What was I've the Seinfeld reunion? Also, was, yeah. was it like that, or was it? A, it was. A, Seinfeld, the Seinfeld reunion was the same. They just chatted, right? They all chatted. They yeah, did it for the Seinfeld. They did yeah. it for uh, West Curb. Wing. Oh, no, uh, that's, that's not there it. There was a. Yeah. There's an entire season. The seventh season of Curb Your Enthusiasm is a whole Seinfeld reunion season. So if you're oh, interested really? okay. in the actual I've Seinfeld seen, reunion, I've seen what's that? Yeah. Larry David. They've done also. They all come in in a sense. Yeah. 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 I remember that's actually, yeah. That, that's good. No, they don't have few of these recently, We've right? We lost so, Maruk. She has no interest in Seinfeld. I would guess not. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm more of a Friends fan, not a Seinfeld ah. fan. Huh? <laughs> now look at us. We, when it comes to Sadhvi and Pragya, and all, we're on the same side. But now when it comes to uh, sitcoms, <laughs> we are divided. You're polarizing uh, I'm, us. Friends I'm versus actually, Seinfeld. I, I'm on Maruk's side. <laughs> if you were to ask me, Friends versus Seinfeld, I pick Friends. I'm out of the show. <laughs> Seinfeld is the second greatest comedy ever made in the history of the I know. world. I know. After Black Adder. Yeah. Seinfeld does not feel rewatchable the way Friends does. I can yes. watch Friends all the but time. Friends doesn't because... make me laugh that much. It's like it's nice. It's funny. It's nice. It's funny. Seinfeld I is died mean. laughing. The soup Nazi. I was on the floor. I in the boy in the bubble. I was I was out of the window. Uh, it's that kind of <laughs> uh, funny, you know. I mean, it's not the level. Yeah. But Seinfeld is. But it's it, it's fun. It's Amit, really funny. But it's mean. Amit, when George takes the job with the New York Yankees, doesn't know what his job is. I know. He comes and puts the suitcase and looks at the clock and goes to sleep for eight hours. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's so funny. That's, that's, that's genius, yeah, yeah. man. Oh, God. That's it. That's all he does. Okay. Then, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, the opposite thing has actually become a life philosophy that people follow. Like, do the opposite. Whatever your mind tells you, you gotta do the opposite. If every day mm-hmm. you're drinking coffee, drink tea. If every day you order pancakes, order the opposite of whatever pancakes are. So every day you sleep with that a woman. Is... Do you sleep with a man the next? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they didn't address one that minute, part. One show, minute. But, so yeah, you're is... saying if instead of urine from the cow, you go for the other side? <laughs> I guess. Yes. Then you're, right. you're eating it and yeah. putting it on your body, both at the same oh, time. <laughs> and what happens to my Gandhian values of non-violence? <laughs> <laughs> the god sorry it's, instead of turning really the other cheek yeah. i stab you <laughs> but i mean, just let me get it clear <laughs> the, the, the list yeah. <laughs> yeah okay i'm eating a biscuit guys just to you know keep the sugar up <laughs> right. i don't need we do have have high energy today for some reason i don't know this conversation Maruk's... has worked up an appetite for you as <laughs> no, it I, maybe maybe there's maybe i've had some urine today i don't know i'm just feeling very up <laughs> 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 So since we're having so much fun, I think we can do like a quick fun story before we get to some other serious stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, a Mumbai man ordered for mouthwash on Amazon, okay, and he got a smartphone instead, okay, which is already a great, great deal, right? right? But now he's unable to return the smartphone because the mouthwash is a consumable item, and Amazon's policy says consumable items cannot be returned. <laughs> so he's just stuck <laughs> with an awesome smartphone. <laughs> Why do you want to return it? Is he yeah, I would, no, he's he's just being good. He's just being like a good Samaritan. He wanted to like he at least like uh, tweeted at them saying, "Hey, hey guys, I'm not able to return this." this? Antrik, what this is a red. Is? It's a, it, see, the, so the mouthwash order was a total of like two forty nine or three forty nine rupees. The smartphone is worth eleven k. No, no, which so company? Quite because it's terrible. Oh, it's for the company. it's, a, re, it's oh, a Redmi. It's a it's a Redmi Note. Oh, yeah. Terrible for the company. Yeah. <laughs> but no, no. So the joke is like, imagine the guy who ordered for a smartphone and got mouthwash instead. <laughs> Because the orders get reversed. Right? <laughs> the only worry is he, gotta... he shouldn't put he shouldn't put the phone in the mouth and start gargling. No <laughs> We've just yeah, spoken about some real idiots on the show already. Ouch! <laughs> but that's an, uh, Amit. So what happens then? You keep it, right? There's no legality to illegality to it. He's not done anything no, wrong. No. He's tried to return it. I mean, like, what is he supposed to do? I don't, I don't think you have to. I I don't even think you have to really make too much of an attempt to return it. They deliver it to you. Yeah, correct. You just keep it. 
Nobody would know if he had if he had yeah, not tweeted I, I, about have it. Have you done anything wrong? I mean, like he's not done. But how do they explain wrong? in their accounts because they've sent a two forty nine rupee bill and then they spend an eleven thousand rupee product and there's yeah. how do you account for that? I, I'm sorry, but for Amazon, it's an error. It's not even like it, it doesn't even qualify as a rounding error, right? No, no, no. For no, no. That, Amazon. That, that, that's different. Okay, that's different. Mm. That's perspective. I'm talking about the fact that it's a, it's an accounts thing. Yeah, it Somebody's problems you know, happen. No? I mean, like you always have, uh, you always have like breakage. You always have spillage. You have, you have pilferage. So all of it these goes things in the collateral for. damage file yeah. of small small things that pile up. Yeah, the, you, you you. I mean, like if you're running a company at this kind of like scale, uh, you have to assume that like you know once out of a hundred thousand times there's going to be an error. Let's and, write down the mouthwash. We can all try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all order. You never I don't know. care. Red me or green me doesn't bother me. Yeah. We'll take them anyway. Uh, wow. So some some good news for somebody during the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. You know. That's really great. I'm cheap. Uh, I love freedly. I, you know, I, 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 do you, Marit, do you get excited still when they give you something small at an event? I mean, you know, the I old love days. it. I love I it. Just- I yeah. love it. I was just going to say I ordered from uh, H&M, not H&M, Marks and Spencer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got a message saying that the order can't be delivered because all deliveries are shut in Mumbai. This was about a month back. And then I get the package, right? Ah, that's and the best. And they've uh, refunded the money and I've got the package. So I tried calling them. I've sent them emails. They haven't responded. So oh, wow. much free. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I was <laughs> delighted, but I did my due diligence. I sent the emails. Yeah. I tried calling them, but nobody's responded to me. Well, that, that, you, of, what more can you do? Yeah, the, that kind of that's thing. That's what happens. I want to understand. No, but I think something stuff like that happens every so often, right? And just consider your good fortune. I mean, like, what else can you do? I, I mean, like, see, at the end of it, you're going to break your head if somebody if you lost something. You're not going to break your head if you gain something. You know, you'll do like, you know, like you said, you'll make one effort, maybe two, but beyond that, who's going to bother, right? Uh, if Shouldn't the break your head effort come from the break broken head person party? But They should be calling up and saying, bro, we sent you the wrong thing. Yeah, but see, again, you have to think about it from their perspective, right? If it's a Marks and Spencer's order, let's say it's a 5,000, 10,000 rupee order, something of that nature. If they have to go and start figuring out, okay, I need to get this collected. How many people are going to have to place how many man hours? For something they have not identified, it's just probably not worth the effort for but them. But does right? anybody get penalized? That's the part that so I'm sure me. there is because if you're are... if you're the warehouse manager and if uh. this happens at your warehouse, like you know, there's an acceptable rate of error, right? Let's mm. say your acceptable rate of error is zero point five percent, right? And if your error rate becomes one percent, then you're out of a job. So mm. people do get responsible, but not probably How on. How do you become such a basis. professional behemoth like um, you know Marks and Spencer or Amazon or whatever uh, when it appears to be so frivolous and blasé sometimes? You know, I mean, these stories are. I mean, you think they'd be really tight and professional and efficient mm. when it comes to everything, As, especially it could happen, but they would clean it up. Okay, so but why don't they clean it up? Uh, let, me, up? let me ask you this question, right? How many times have you heard a story like this? Twice Very in five few. minutes. Yeah. Huh? Not like, too often, but twice now in five minutes. Twice in five minutes from two different stores, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Amazon on a daily basis, if I remember correctly, does something like 750,000 orders a day in India. Okay. Wow. What's the percentile oh. of F-ups? Uh, exactly. I mean, <laughs> like, very low. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, like, how, like how often do you hear is, about this stuff? Like point I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that it's like point zero, uh, it's probably got to be 99.99% efficient, right? Because that's where most of these guys go for. Actually, Six Sigma is a thing, right? Which is 99.9999% uh, accurate. Uh, that is like a gold standard created by this uh, uh, Jack Welch, uh, the former CEO of GE. Uh, which is basically a way uh, it's how, it's what they expect as like, you know, a standard that if you are a process driven business, you should be 99.999% accurate. Right now we can only call Marks and Spencer's out for one thing and Amazon out for one thing. So we don't, we don't even hit that fraction. No, but, uh, one of the things that Amazon ago. messes up on all the time is they have that option of, is this a gift and we can wrap it up for you, right? right? Eight times out of 10, they never wrap it up. It just goes as is. There's no card in it. So obviously they're charging you money, but I, I've personally experienced that eight times oh, wow. out of 10, it never goes as a gift. So then I think that is... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's also That's because uh, after the divorce, yeah. he has to pay the wife a little extra. <laughs> yes. So he's asked them to you know, refrain not... from like, doing extra stuff because he's bleeding here. Yeah. <laughs> Which, Bill Gates, how much, what's happening there? No one's giving us a settlement figure. Uh, I have The no latest idea. thing I read... A latest thing I read is uh, there, like his uh, his wife has been spreading. I don't know if they're spreading rumors, but they're like she's she's put out uh, like a a press release of sorts saying that he was uh, essentially cheating on her. Yeah, 
uh, uh, Jeffrey yeah. Epstein so, bit think, and all that, yeah. No, yeah, so, yeah, so Jeffrey, but, but what's the forget all the morality of who cares anyway after a point. Uh, of the Jeffrey Epstein stuff, I care about the morality. And yeah, he has declined, he has decided he has said that that's absolutely not true. Dude, Jeffrey Epstein is spent a night child there. molestation. There's proof that he spent a night there. That, yeah, so the pedophile Gideon all is another story altogether. Yeah, but, mm. but, but he, he he's spent a night there. They have proved that he they had a meeting or whatever, and then he came back in the early hours of the morning, like five, six in the morning. Uh, from okay. the mansion where all the ill-gotten stuff would happen, etc., etc. But that doesn't I mean have not heard that, that he has... no, anywhere. No, no, that's the thing that she released. Uh, it started released in 2019 it? or 18 or something. Uh, Melinda, when he came back late, uh, like uh, in the early hours of the morning after spending the night at the mansion. Okay. Which is a little creepy, no? You're a married mm. man. And he, you, he, it's not like it a hostel. Is. You get a day night pass and all that. I mean, ah, Saturday morning, the guy, bye bye, baby. You know, it's not exactly like that. But I, I don't. Uh, so again, I haven't been following it closely, but I haven't read anything about this. I read about him getting caught out for a affair that he had in uh, 99 or 2000, uh, be, because of which is why he also resigned from the Microsoft board. Right, because they yeah. then investigated the affair that he had. It was with a Microsoft employee. Employee. Yeah, he, uh, and uh, that's why he's resigned off the Microsoft board. Uh, that's what I've heard. I've heard nothing about this Jeffrey yep. Epstein so, stuff. I've always consistently heard from everything but, that I've read, and I've not read much in the last few days. But everything I read before that was always consistently that with the only meetings that were there with Jeffrey Epstein were done with Nathan. Uh, were done on behalf of Nathan Mirvold, who is a guy who is like this patent king. Uh, in the US and an ex Microsoft guy. Look, just because all this has happened doesn't mean the guy don't do two and two mix for oh. and all that. I think we should give him the benefit of the doubt, all right? Don't just rush to think that he's uh, in there's criminality, sexual perversion, all this involved. Well, so I'm going with the fact that it is some sort of adultery, whether it was in 99, 2000, yeah. or whenever. Mm. And she has every right to say, okay, I, the marriage doesn't have any base to stand on anymore. And that's it. It's a normal divorce in that sense i don't want to i don't think we should you really uh, yeah. go into because we don't have any idea honestly that'd be just too much no but, but I've, I've started yeah. disliking mr gates after particularly uh after that recent interview of his did you see where he said that vaccine ip should not be after biden yeah, signed off I saw the didn't he take IP it back on... no he didn't, no, he didn't he gave an interview to sky news where the uh, ferocity with which he, uh, you know, completely went against uh, Biden's decision, and also the fact that India was not a place w- which could produce vaccines. Have you seen that clip? It um, it indicates, on the one hand, he's one of the biggest philanthropists and doing so much for India. Even hundred million to the HIV AIDS Foundation for which yes. he could account after some time. Uh, but on yeah. the other hand, uh, that uh, interview seemed a little out of place. He is an so. IP fundamentalist. He is, uh, I mean, like, you know, that uh, it's, uh, it's a flaw. It's, it's, it's one of the things I, you know, it's one of the few things I don't admire him for as much as I admire him for other things. Uh, but he is an IP fundamentalist. When it comes to intellectual property stuff, he just, he goes off the, like, you know, far end. But that's again, you know, I mean, like, this is how he made his billions of dollars. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, now that we've got those interruptions in the middle, uh, unprofessionally done by our proprietor and uh, friend. I apologize. <laughs> uh, too late. Uh, can we take a quick break? Yes. Shall yes, we? Shall we? Yep. And tell me, do I have to talk about cred, my friend? Yes, you do. Okay, then I have to go back to you now. Yep. Uh, I can't find you. Where the hell are you? <laughs> oh, you're right on top. Sorry. Yeah. Do we go into uh, the first one? Yep, sure. First one. Maruk will join us, right? Maruk, cred so is what very is important. This? I have no idea. What, well, cred plays on? a very important role in our uh, in our life at the moment. As in, uh, we say their name and then they, you know, chat with us. So far, no money has come. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to just repeat what I'm saying with feeling. All right. I'm a big believer in doing good, and I love it when I get rewarded for doing good. You Maruk, honestly want me to say no, this? No, no, Maruk's not going to do this. Mar- <laughs> Mar- Maruk is... Uh... I, I just realized that if Maruk says it, I mean, what kind of meaning will it? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it, we'll leave it. No, no, uh, no. All we need to do is pay our credit card bills on the Cred app and mm-hmm. oh, the rewards, the cashbacks and so much more. It's like being a part of an exclusive club. I think I've already said too much. Download Cred, but if they ask you, you didn't hear it from me. Maruk, seriously, huh? <laughs> they ask you because they will ask you. They're like the government. They'll come at you later. All right. So just download cred. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is what advertising does one of the do 21st. with these cred coins. I've, I'm uh, you understand. can get a lot of different things for them, right? So I mean, like I got I got a bunch of discounts for different products that I want to get. 
so when you go to the store, uh, you can use the coins as a discount thing. Uh, they did some CSR stuff where you could give, uh, you could exchange coins for oxygen uh, cylinders and stuff like oh, that. Oh, really? Yeah. And well, this that, you can figure out on the app, is it? You can figure that out on the app itself. Okay. Yeah. So they did a okay. bunch of stuff like that as well. Uh, but, you know, I mean, like fundamentally, the reason I use it more than anything else, all this other stuff is extra, right? It's it was a nightmare to pay credit card bills. Uh, just agree, figuring yeah. out uh, which place you needed to make the payment from, getting notifications on due dates, all of that stuff was just so annoying. This kind of just centralizes everything. All four credit cards on one place. You see when yeah. the due dates are. Also, we yeah maybe we have a surrogate system. Somebody else pays your credit card bills. I was telling you about how my dad used to pay the the alcohol bills when I was young. <laughs> now that's gone. I would love that. That's real friendship. Silvery, will you pay my credit card bills? I have to support a full family and aging parents. And you're young with nothing to worry about. I mean, sure. Uh, will, will I get extra payment? Uh, 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 Mikhail's uh, Canada admission, if it comes through uh, that uh, 20 lakhs, uh, how will you forex? How will we we'll talk, talk offline? Uh, okay, cool, cool. Uh, Hello, uh, done. Sorry. You may have yeah. to sell a cow. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the break is over, Maruk. You didn't even realize how subtle our breaks are. It's unbelievable. Because we learned as youngsters that the breaks are very boring for people. So we keep them very short and sometimes the break is not even a break. We don't even know there was a break. Sometimes I can't remember. Yeah. But you realize we've become a shopping network on the show now? For the last 25 minutes, all we've discussed is Amazon, uh, Marks and Spencer's, credit, credit and Bill card Gates. bills, Bill Gates, <laughs> IP yeah. property. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> right. Silvi, do you have a topic? Yeah, give yep, us some yeah, we stuff. Have another one. So, uh, so last week, uh, I think about like five days back, this happened. In Delhi, people had been putting up posters uh, saying, uh, the poster said, Modi ji, Hamare bacho ki vaccine ko videsh kyun bhej diya? Like, why, Modi ji, why have you sent our children's vaccine uh, to foreign countries? Uh, about 17 persons were arrested for putting up said posters. Uh, and under a, uh, what, uh, some vandalizing law, which is like never lo- never used. Like, they, yeah. they, they never used, like, putting up, like, defacing public property, something. They never used. It's, it's nothing to do with dissenting views from the center. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, exactly. Of course, that's so, not the reason. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. so politicians and leaders have, have been coming out in support of these people and of oh, the Baba, The opposition is coming in support. Being able to... Completely divided as a country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but nobody from BJP is going to say no. That's what. But that's, anyway. that, yeah. that is the great for... thing in democracy when that happens. When the party itself yeah. starts having people saying, what the hell, yeah. This is very <laughs> yeah. democratic. But we, I don't so, think we see that ever in India. Do we? Do we see people go against the party? I mean, like, aren't you forced to vote as per party in some ways you're not allowed to change yeah. parties on a bill and the party whip being mandatory you know, is one thing huh. when you talk about specific issues like a democratic democratic thought you know when you stand for those values like just the fact that a, in a democracy a person can show dissent and can you argue that an indian example of somebody taking a stance against the party in a but I, i'm way? saying it's, it's not the same thing as having to vote for a bill which they follow the party dictator whip. Uh, I'm saying, surely here you can just say, look, this is against freedom of expression you, in a democracy. I agree. I, I'm it's, not disagreeing. It's simply the only thing that divides us from a, fa- a fascist empire. You have to be allowed I to say, I don't like this. With the uh, current government at the center, you can't do that. I think there's a clear, uh, it's not even a party whip. It's coming never straight from the prime minister's yeah. office. Yeah. This is not even a, a BJP issue. It's a government issue. <laughs> Some so, critics say they spend more time looking at who's criticizing them than running the, yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at the example, Cyrus. I mean, from from uh, the external affairs minister having that meeting, uh, from an image building exercise that they did, uh, down to each and everything. Uh, I mean, yesterday, Danik Bhaskar did a piece where they looked at uh, tweets of all the ministers uh, in the past one month, especially since the second wave uh, came on. And hardly anybody has spoken about or helped out anyone or, you know, yeah. retweeted a message supporting somebody, just like a random person. Right? It's all negative. All, it's, it's all about what the government is doing. It's all about rallies. It's about elections. Yeah. They've done this analysis, and I'm quite uh, surprised, pleasantly so, with the regional press taking a lead and doing some really incisive pieces, especially Danik Bhaskar, which in the past hasn't been, you know, that aggressive in its reporting. So, uh of course, you can't say anything against this government. I mean, tomorrow they might do something to you also, especially with all the like student in, talk. Like in the middle, like just a few weeks back, this was in the reports that people who were like posting on Twitter and all, right? Like saying, okay, we need oxygen cylinders, we need remdesivir. 
the like authorities are going after these people for posting online that you need this stuff and you are in such big yeah, trouble. Yeah, even, even You're the, showing the bad side of on Twitter. Even on, the, on the social media agitation India. thing, the psycho fans who lined up for against uh, the farmer agitation was so militant. The, you know, the, I didn't realize why can't you have a discussion? Why is it wrong to voice your opinion and say I'm not happy with the laws? Again, let's not get into who's right or wrong. But the fact that you aren't allowed to talk and then uh, people from us uh, side of the street actually saying how dare you? You're anti-national. How can you? What, what's going on? It's a democracy. You have different uh, divergent opinions, and let's talk. You know, it's, uh, from Kashmir it's, downwards, it's, you have to talk. You can't just just throw things into the air and say this is it. That's not democracy. No, debate is completely lost, and it's yeah. uh, more so on social media. I mean, why else is the fourth estate there? Why else is the media there except for? It's no media. You know, discussion. It's, I, but it's there all taking sides. So yeah. can, can I ask you a question? I mean, like this is uh, you brought up social media and you brought up the media one after the other, right? And somebody with the experience you have over there, you know, one of the things that drives me nuts these days when I look at news is covering social media. Why does the news cover social media? I I just I don't understand it. it. It's almost no, I mean, like they're, they're scared reasons. to not cover. They're scared to not cover. It feels lazy, right? I mean, like you're just pushing. Oh. Uh, I think a uh, because social media makes such a huge difference. Um, it is part of our conversation. It, there are now trainings done by Reuters, Washington Post, where they say that social media is going to be a part of news gathering. So you have to look at social media for that. Two, uh, laziness. Primarily, uh, reporters don't want to go out and report, and they easily get sources of information from social media. And three, because newsrooms are so short-staffed. There are three people who are multitasking all the time and you actively, you have uh, agencies which actually send you the feed so you don't need to send reporters out. It's a luxury now to send a reporter out to cover news yeah. because you get it from uh, via agencies like ANI and INS and PTI. And then all you sit is you kind of opinionate on uh, sitting in, uh, at your desk and put the stories out. Hard so the lead is, reporting is Maruk. Is so the lead is taken up. by the so, social media. Let's face it. I'm sitting in a in CNBC right now. The yes. social media gives you the lead, and then you work on that. It's not like the TV reporters and the print reporters, like in the oldies, will actually go on ground, find their own stories, and push it forward. And then social media would come behind that. So it's almost Absolutely. like the, I mean, the first runner. Print is still doing it, but television, by and large. It uh, just depends on social media and these mm -hmm. wire agencies for most of its information. I mean, today, honestly, if you look at a barca going out and reporting, that's real reporting, right? Yeah. Old style. But that's hardly happening. The rest, uh, I mean, uh, there are quite a few good journalists, television and otherwise. They're at, at home doing uh, interactions like the kinds I do. I'm not going out and reporting, right? Right. It's just I'm, I'm opinionating or I'm talking to somebody who's a newsmaker and trying to get some information. A, because I might not have the resources and B, it takes a, um, it takes a lot of effort to go out and do what she's doing. Yeah. But that's lost. I mean, compared to what's happening in the West, we don't spend money on news reporting. So investigative yeah. journalism is gone. It right. is. It's, a, it's, a, it's an absolutely dying segment of any newsroom. It requires a lot of money. There are no instant results. Uh, newsrooms want instant stories. Uh, I remember when I was in a newsroom, there was an investigative team that was actually trying to gather information and they'd got a good piece, but it wasn't the entire story. And they were made to put it out because, you know, this will become old and we need a story right now. We don't have a big story. We need an exclusive. So uh, nobody wants to spend that kind of money. Mm. That is somewhat sad, but because it, it, it just is it's so aggravating, right? You see, like, uh, like, I, I mean, I get that. So Kangana Ranawat should be like the last three minutes of lifestyle news, right? Really? But Not instead, even that. yeah, hmm. but I mean, like, instead of that, she's like, breaking you know, story, uh, she's your every, opinion on it. Then you get somebody else's opinion who's not even connected to Bollywood. It just goes yeah. on. Uh, and it just, it, it drives me nuts, right? I mean, like, it, uh, instead of talking about the things that she is just uh, she is talking about from like you know a this is this issue that we should be talking about let's talk about the violence in west bengal instead of that we're talking about kangana's conversation about west bengal and people's reaction to her and that just drives me it drives me insane it's like the, the, it, the, it feels like there's no additive value to that kind of conversation it's, it's, it's a big it's, reason why i've completely just like yeah. you you say clickbait it's the same yeah. thing that television is trying to Maruk, do. what about the rhinoceros in the room uh, and his agenda, which set the agenda in 2020 for everyone. 
I, I speak of uh, rhinoceros because uh, Assam is famous for the rhino and uh, Goswami comes from Assam. So my, mm. you know, intelligence is revealed there. Because <laughs> it started with cow <laughs> urine, it must end with a rhino, rhino's horn. So mm. I'm saying he also set the agenda with some ridiculous stories. Now they are ridiculous. If you remember mm. June of last year. Uh, yes. The suicide, uh, the, all the yeah. pontificating, all the you know brow beating and you know, emotional charge conversations, which went nowhere. So th- I mean, they've just destroyed journalism, haven't they? Because he is popular. They have, uh, they have and uh, uh, I think a lot of the younger generation doesn't know the difference. That's the most terrifying part. Uh, you know, at least uh, at least my generation, uh, you you two are much younger. No, no, no. But my- <laughs> <laughs> Don't make that mistake. I have no, good genetics yeah. and he's lost hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying our collective generation at least knew the difference. The youngsters today don't, they uh, they look at Arnab and the likes and say, okay, this is journalism. This is what it must be, right? This is how you expose it. The whole of last year, we had stories which were not even investigated. Somebody caught in a car with a, uh, a hidden camera and being asked to say whatever and you don't know the antecedents of the guy. You don't know the agenda the, or motives, possible motivations the guy might have. And you're putting that stuff on air and saying, this is news. I mean, uh, you can't go any lower than that. So uh, yeah. we've destroyed it. We've destroyed it to a huge, huge extent. I don't know how it can be. I think independent media or independent journalists, the likes of Varkha, Without fear Hanya, from oh. uh, Faye, they are the ones who are still trying to keep Anu, Anubhad. They're still trying to keep some But they pay a price it. for that, don't they? But they're too small. Easy. They're too small to really... It's, yeah. it's prime time news that needs to make that change. Uh, Wow. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's terrifying. It, it is, it, and it's it, it's just it's so qualitatively bad, right? I mean, like I I can't. Uh, I, and this is, I mean, like, it's, it's honestly, it's without exception. I mean, like, I spent some time flipping through news channels over the pandemic, and I can't do it. I just, I can't watch more than if, a bit. I mean, if you want to finally uh, take on the government and criticize this present government, you have to outsource news to China. I think that's the only way to do it right now. <laughs> I think that'll be fairly successful as it well. It'll get banned. They'll be releasing it as an app and it'll get banned. Nothing is better than getting banned. Getting banned makes you a superstar. Name That's one true. banned person or thing which doesn't skyrocket after that. Yeah. Look at alcohol. They banned TikTok. alcohol. It's the best Dude, business in the world. They killed TikTok in India. Completely killed it, no? But it's reborn in America and everywhere else. It's, uh, it's all over the world. It's actually, yeah. uh, it's a really, really, like, you know, it, it, in some ways it drives, uh, it's it's a really bad policy, right? Because yeah. now all of a sudden India is a country that doesn't have access to some of the best creators in the world making some True. of the most interesting content in the world. We don't have access yes. to it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's insane. Instead, we have Chingari and uh, all these other apps which are, you know, they're, I mean, like, they're fine, but they're and not. you sound elitist, Walkesh, for a boy. <laughs> no, I mean, like, <laughs> Chingari, <laughs> Mira, Nahi hai. We can take jock person there. There's, there's no, Takatak I, also. Takatak there's Takatak. There is yeah. uh, Daily Hunt is doing something with... Uh, Josh. Josh, that's it. Then mm. uh, there, there are a number of these apps, and they're, they're all fine, right? But, I mean, like, the, there's a reason why TikTok got the kind of uh, popularity it did, right? It yeah. had creation tools which were incredible. It had an incredible algorithm for consumption. It was on another level, wasn't it? It. Hmm. it was mm-hmm. and I mean like it's it's something that uh, the rest of the world gets what we don't get right now and I think that that is uh, and you blame Kangana for that I blame many things for that I, I, yeah, I, I, I have I, an interesting story on TikTok no. uh, I was taking a, a, a Uber from a PVR Juhu mm-hmm. back to Bandra and the driver I was on uh, I was talking to somebody and he said ma'am you are on TikTok pe hai? I said no I am on TikTok pe nahi uh, he said, I'm a rap artist, I have 1 lakh followers on TikTok. Pe. Wow. And then he started wow. doing his, uh, he did a rap and it oh, was wow. so good. And he said, my wife has 2 lakh uh, uh, followers. Hai. I said, Are, uh, so I said, are you being able to monetize it? She, uh, so he said, she can uh, monetize, but I'm not being able to. I just want to Ranveer Singh. Se milwa do. Because Gali Boy had just come out at that. Ah, time. okay. So the, the, I was, but I was fascinated by his story. I, st- I think I still have his number on my phone. That's amazing. So I, now I, you I, just I, call him to rap. Chalo, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, but that's uh, the kind of thing that TikTok unleashed, right? It, uh, like, I mean, honestly, I uh, when TikTok first came out, I was like, what is this stuff, right? I mean, I was absolutely, mm. who's going to watch 15 second videos, right? That was my first initial reaction. Then you installed it, you looked at it, and you started seeing the people who are making content and the kind of like incredibly imaginative. And also there's a bunch of incredibly misogynistic and incredibly hateful yes. content there. But yeah. some also in incredibly kind of like you know just really Ingenious, really yeah. yeah it's stuff made and we lost it because our government wanted to fight with china china wanted to fight with our government i mean like you know it's not as no, if no, like you, you know we criticize were, the policy amit i, I no. don't when uh, 26 11 happened pakistan uh, i think threw pepsi out for some time oh. which sponsored all the cricket within six months they had to bring them back there's no um, correlation sometimes with the well, thinking it's also, been no? a year now <laughs> It's TikTok. been a year since we lost TikTok. I uh, the, so the two big the two big apps. 2024, we right? they'll reverse it. <laughs> we 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 lost two big apps, right? That were used big in India, right? So TikTok mm. and PUBG. PUBG yeah. is back. Yeah. PUBG, PUBG has come back. back. Yeah. Uh, they've come back as Battle Underground. Uh, PUBG was endorsed by the PM in a speech oh. a couple of times, if I remember correctly. Yes. I, yeah. Am I right, uh-huh. Maruk? Yes. He's used yes, the absolutely. reference for the kids who were in the audience and they all, you know, yeah. clapped, which yeah. is good. It was good uh, thinking. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, and then PUBG out. But I'm yeah. sure there are lobbies in India that are against TikTok. Maybe some uh, developers uh, are developing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The names we just Otherwise, mentioned. it would have come back. The names but we just I, mentioned uh, have taken the space, so they, no, they have yes. lots to lose. They still haven't uh, eased up on a lot of those China restrictions they put in back then, right? I mean, like yeah. even stuff like investments and stuff like that, where Chinese companies are not allowed to acquire Indian companies. Those, those, those uh, uh, the I way they phrased it was neighboring things, countries are not allowed to acquire Indian mm. countries. But I mean, like first those things, things are still in place. First things first, we should get Ajinomoto back in the Chinese food. Yeah. It's never and gone. And PVO back in the cold drinks. It's okay. never gone. Ajinomoto has always no, but, been but in China. But, but, yeah. the, but they kind of tell you, you know, this is with or without and all that. And then you start feeling guilty, especially with the old people around you. Now I'm an old person myself. So, you know, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, just kill me already. Just give me the worst <laughs> diet, but let it taste good. You know, and then you know, just don't think about it. It's a waste of time. Okay, guys, the aim is, man, go to work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Check out Kunal Vijaykar, whose birthday it was yesterday. There's no happy money birthday. in the Happy birthday. Kunal. Happy birthday, yeah, Kunal. Maru, did you, Maru. Uh, Kanu, Kunal, did you see Kunal, the... Happy birthday. They're saying happy birthday. And ask him if he saw the stories that you told about him. Did yesterday. you see the stories that they discussed on, on the show? <laughs> Would you like to come on? Would you like to come on and, uh, and uh, rebuttal it? And can, can you bring Baman on to confirm the truth? Can you and Baman do 10 minutes for us together to confirm whether I'm lying or not? Okay? So now you've said it, so you have to do it. Yes. One last thing. Have you got a boob job? Well done. Okay. <laughs> Maruk, that's really rude. How dare you ask that? <laughs> I'm about to say he's looking I'm sorry so about good, that. that... <laughs> Happy birthday, Kunal. Okay. So... <laughs> right. Yeah, is yeah. fast, guys. All right, all right. Uh, so we have great comments. Uh, first one comes in from Bigfoot Specials. He just says, uh, I work at TikTok. It's not coming back. So I, I hope uh, that's... Uh, no, how do we know? Uh, like, you know, policies change, bro. I mean... Uh, you know, Coke I mean, was thrown can, out of yeah. India and it came back years yeah, decades could change later. Overnight, yeah. Yes. Yeah. What you, Mar- Maruk, you you're better than this than all of us. Nothing is forever, is it? Nothing, nothing, absolutely. Especially policy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in the days of Sharad Pawar, the you knew that the easiest thing to change. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Even though it's the right, toughest, uh... but it's the easiest in our context. <laughs> I, I think the great thing about politicians worldwide, uh, you saw the fight in Australia with, with uh, Google, etc. and all that, mm-hmm. is that um, it's all about, you know, what they say on Monday doesn't have to hold on Friday. It really doesn't matter. Yes. It's, 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 I don't think we should take it too seriously. I think we get too emotional when we think that what they're saying is gospel and all that. It's not like that at all. It's just blowing with the wind and then it goes the other way. So we just have to see. You know, I was, I was listening to Obama's book. And it's lovely listening to it. Audacity of hope. It. Uh, no, no, the latest one. I'm forgetting the name. I hate um, uh, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I of his first term in office. And he's lovely because he's narrating it. And it's lovely to hear him. And I'm a big fan of audio books. And if you hear of the politics in America, honestly, it's no different from what's happening in India. I'm sure. Yep. Uh, it's just that their institutions are so much stronger that you can't just get away with anything and just say anything mm. and say, ah, no, but Maruk, over press, by the next news cycle. Their press and the ability to show dissent, whether it's a common yes. man or, or a comedian or a guy on radio or, or investigative reporter is far more, you know, I mean, because that's more oh, robust yes. and powerful and they can Absolutely. really take on establishments, which is one and, big problem we're having. And the fact that they have uh, survived Trump and the institution still uh, hold strong, I mean, that's uh, remarkable. But, but the I politics think... essentially 
is no different. I mean, no. it's just the names are changed and the cast are changed. And, uh, they have better and, accents uh, and wear suits. Are changed, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree with that. I think uh, when it comes to the press, I think like uh, one of the big differences is um, the First Amendment, right? I mean, like the absolute kind of protection that that provides yes. versus the Indian uh, constitutional amendment regarding freedom of speech, which like, you know, makes exceptions for not not make a, not offending people right i mean like that just kind of changes the entire that's a paradox we discuss this every yeah. time on every episode i know you cannot it's... have freedom it's of speech in the next the, line say uh, without it's offending not just people the freedom of press it's also extremely strong libel and slander laws mm-hmm. yeah. i mean what happened last year uh, especially last year in view of what they did to ria and to sushant and the whole yeah. story right that won't happen in the us because there are <laughs> boundaries for the press also the media needs uh, checks and balances we don't have any we can pretty much say whatever we uh, want Amit, he he spoke of proof and stuff like that you know yeah. i've got proof that these uh, yeah. medical reports they're all falsehoods you know the yeah. defamation was easy anywhere in the world i would think mm-hmm. because ap- they're recorded falsehoods that have been proclaimed by a person you know yeah. uh, absolutely destroying families their friends their supporters their careers their reputation yeah agree. terrible I, terrible it's, it's, uh, the book by obama is called the promised land I was just ah, to okay. one minute check that now with yes. the israel going hammer and tongs again i wonder if that's the best reference yeah <laughs> yeah mm. right. well, uh, nobel prize next one prize for that mm. well uh, trump was on his way he met kim jong un luckily they don't speak <laughs> the same language but they had so much in common they fought over the, the i think they fought over the lobster they both grabbed the lobster at the same time and you know then there was pulling and all that you know i had i'd made a prediction uh, to family and friends uh before the second wave before the second covid wave that uh, mr modi would win a peace prize uh, before his second term is over and i felt he was going towards that but the if, second wave didn't happen changed a lot of things that yeah. giving out the vaccine yeah. abroad and all that we were now the powerful country helping the altruism and all that it was going and, in the right and direction also his approach towards pakistan and wanting a uh, long lasting peace in the region the moderate uh, speaking been, yes. speaking yeah fair enough it's just i, I that think the you're second right second wave has kind of changed things for a lot of people oh. say that's his real aim to try and get the mm. nobel prize and yes. he's always been traveling <laughs> we used to do the jokes and he's always traveling he's always beyond india his real capacity yes. yeah yeah Three years left for elections. A lot of time for things to change. But this COVID, mm. we thought would be over and done with. Now it's just crippling everybody. Yeah, you know? but still, elections aren't happening for three years. So I and mean, like, we'll forget about COVID. Opposition but... that is actually I think so. doing anything yeah. on the ground, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I give you one can name. If we have an opposition. Yeah, I give you one name. Mamta Banerjee, the ferocity of the wild tiger, mm. uh, untamed, dying, but untamed. let's see what happens i think only a woman can bring down indian male politicians you have to figure out a female you. the ferocity of the female is always more we've discussed this dogs across the world police forces keep females for ferocity and loyalty they may be smaller in size but they are more ferocious and loyal so i go with a female form to bring down governments i agree with you 100% cyrus there you go and also because the never underestimate the uh, woman voter hmm. she's quiet which, which is a new demographic she is so uh, you would powerful, say also yes yeah. she controls I, the indian household it's a, you know i i read somewhere what is uh, that uh, basically the reason why indian polls do not kind of reflect anywhere close to what finally winds up happening is because nobody knows how the indian woman is voting yes uh, and posters underestimate that role all yeah. the time yeah and the pull she has on the entire family in a sense that's absolutely <laughs> we think of the man is the leader and all that but the woman will decide when the ground reality of uh, how much is costing what and what is doing what for her family yeah i, I think that and yeah that's true that's a huge you thing you know uh, uh, as an aside uh, do we still have time because this story might take a bit sure. okay now, just that in uh, just a short story uh, yeah. in kashmir with the rise of wahhabism and fundamentalism and radicalism i had a friend who was actually writing a report, uh, a, a book and he said that one of the reasons why radicalism will not grow in kashmir is because of the kashmiri woman she controls the household she believes in sufi saints she goes to these dargahs and she'll always take her son or her daughter with her when she goes to the dargah and that is what kind of gets ingrained in the child and that's why they don't go towards radicalism it was a very interesting point of view i think it's changing very fast on the ground but the indian woman is always underestimated including me <laughs> no, that's that's like stand up you lays up a wrong path and then superbly punched in the end yeah nice nice can we quickly do one more guys yeah. i have to yeah. go and pretend to work again shot shot uh, girish patel asks uh, cyrus do you want to have a hello friends reunion 
<laughs> no, no, I, friends is having a reunion. I pulled out of Hello Friends, so I, I don't know if they want me back. Ajit Pal, the maker, is somewhere in New Zealand, safe <laughs> at the moment. But um, <laughs> if they're going to shoot another episode, as long as they write it in a in a way where you know it's not a copy of uh, Friends, just translated from English, because I think that was a big failure trying to do it that way. They have to sort of localize it, like they try to do with Raymond also. And the problem is culturally, these things have to change completely. You just take the premise of people living together, and then it has to change completely. It just doesn't work. Uh, well, the office worked, no? It. The Indian office worked. No, it didn't. I thought it, it worked work. okay. I, it's not like I love the office here, anyway. It's, yeah, it didn't. It didn't work. Okay. Uh, <laughs> these are tough ones. Tough times, guys. Tough times. Okay. <laughs> That's why I drive an Uber cab and rap in my spare time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, quick. One more. They haven't called okay, me. Okay, one, one more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anish Rawal asks, Cyrus, what's something you wish you knew when you landed in NYC? I came here three months ago and would love to hear your insights from you. Well, the first problem I had was the accent, especially Brooklynish accent. The, the more the twangy. Correct me if I'm wrong, Amit. You know the they've got this very twangy accent, which is tough on the ear to pick yeah. up. You know, very pointed words, and and you know it's nasally as well. So I was, you know, and, and then you start getting intimidated because you can't ask a person, you know, pardon, pardon two or three times because the Americans get really irritated. The brush sort of personalities. So while they're friendly and warm, in, in two minutes, it's like, you know, they've lost it. So, you, you know, I went everywhere. I went, I had to keep asking again and again. Finally found the Cuban ladies in Strasbourg who spoke bad English. It was, it was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> uh, because, you know, they struggled to put words together and I could take my time and I could put the conjunction in for them and a preposition here, a dot there, a comma here. So that was good. The other thing is, don't make eye contact on the subway, bro. You know, mm. uh, firstly, my skin color. I used to wear crucifix and a Nyx uh, thing. Nobody looked at me. No, you scared of brown 90s. skin men. You went early nineties. Yeah. No, no, but listen, uh, you can go to the subway now. It's very, very safe now. No, but you, but uh, everybody looks down. Reads their own. No, of course, now. Rats there, so it's quite yes. Scary, no, but I'm yeah. compared to Mumbai. Okay, or, or Mumbai or Gurgaon for that matter. Just compared, where everybody just stares at everybody. We are staring people. Oh yeah, uh, okay, you mean like that? Yeah. So we Indians, we, we don't know what's being hostile. I keep telling people yeah. and they stare at me. Oh, you know, anywhere else in the world, they'll kill you. You have to be careful. So, so in America, the last thing you want to do is, is that. So I have a cousin from uh, New York. I have two cousins from New York. One of them speaks in that Brooklyn kind of accent, yeah, right? Leaking, and yeah. he spent two years living in India. Uh, man, it was hilarious. Nobody could understand him. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody could understand him. He was working for, I think, uh, uh, one of the investment bank, Goldman Sachs or uh, Goldman Sachs or Mar- Morgan Stanley or one of them. And he was over here and he was like, it, it was like, it was so like I could not believe that he could get anything done because he doesn't speak any Hindi, doesn't speak any Gujarati, only speaks English, and nobody can understand him. It yeah. was that's great. a funny thing about dialects and accents. You know, you can speak the language perfectly and you have no idea what the guy's <laughs> saying. It's such a it's ridiculous, you know. And I feel a lack of you know your your empowering thing goes the other way completely. You know, after one week when you meet someone like that, mm. so those those were very intimidating moments initially for me because New Yorkers are what they say. They're straightforward and in a way ruthless in their you know approach to everything. It's just straightforward and whatever. But then you catch on. And you do the same thing. Like you don't, you talk to someone in a dis- dismissive but polite fashion. The please and thank yous are actually they're impolite. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, please next. Okay, please next, please. Yeah. I mean, it's not really please. It's like you motherfucker, why aren't you moving up forward faster? Actually, that you know. And, and then the scared desi Indian man is like, uh, I, don't, I'm, I, what, what to say? You start losing everything, including accent. But after a couple of weeks, you start becoming part of it. It was great fun. I, yeah. Suddenly, I saw Denzel Washington walking on a street. You know, I. I it, it was amazing, you know, out of the blue. So I was, you know, you're not going to see Amitabh Bachchan walking on the street, you know. Uh, <laughs> so that those experiences of New York was a great leveler. The, you know, you see all kinds of, on the subway, you've got someone, Goldman Sachs head is standing there with a gold pen worth, you know, millions of dollars or whatever. And a McDonald employee is right next to him reading a paper. So you know, all that is good, which, which we don't have here, which if the metro yeah. to be a success, we have to have. Yeah. You know, everyone takes that metro, you know. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to happen. Agreed. Right, should we do one more? We sure. have time? Yeah, we have time. All right. Uh, uh, Girish Patel has another question. He says, uh, what's your opinion on Elon Musk after his adventures with cryptocurrencies? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I'm not happy. I have a little money in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> is it IBM money or is it personal money? It's personal money. <laughs> but I heard there's a, there was a 30% drop or something. Uh, right? 30% drop. drop. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it's like one third value gone. Temporary? Oh, uh-huh. 
Well, I'm but sure temporary. Market. See, again, yeah. the, the idea with crypto is if you're investing crypto with the idea of buying and selling, you're a fool because you don't know crypto. You don't understand crypto. The idea that I have is just put a little bit of money in crypto every month and let it sit over there and see what happens. Play money, money which you're not serious about. I haven't played poker in a year. So basically, okay, instead so of spending money game? on poker, I'm putting money into crypto. Is it like, no, no. Is it a mutual fund to you? What's the end game? It's, yeah, I mean, like it's a mutual fund. It, it, it's a gamble. It's like, you know, it's like putting, uh, it's a long-term gamble. Who knows? Uh, uh, so right. you don't even give it a thought. You're saying I don't this even is a give lottery. It a thought. I yeah. put it in, and whatever happens happens. happens. And I, I put it in not enough for me to ever feel well, anything. I check fairly obsessively at least four or five times a week. I go and check what the value of it is. But yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not taking any money out of it, right? I mean, like, and mm-hmm. if I'm doing anything, right, you know, I might move money from Bitcoin to Dogecoin or Dogecoin to Ethereum or something like that. But I'm not doing anything beyond that. Right. And so it's basically, but yeah, no, I'm not happy. It is one, but one third of the you value are investing in, You're investing in Dogecoin as, as well? I did a little Dogecoin when all that nonsense was going on. And then I'm like, no, I can't do yeah. Dogecoin. This is just too stupid. <laughs> but you have more money than I thought. Yeah, no, I know. Dude, it's First like, and foremost, dude, there's, 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 there's relevant uh, conventional investing, which you must be doing. Uh-huh. And then you want to have to throw it on, on the, dude, all these this is products, nothing which are slightly far fetched. I, I put in like seven and a half thousand, ten thousand rupees a month into this year. It's nothing. That's. One third of my dad's medical supplies for the month. One third of your dad's medical supplies for the month. I'm okay, sure so that's it's... not a big part of your overall family expenditure. Yeah, my family eats too much. Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just one community meal, you know, just that's it once a day. And they can, like animals, we come and feed. Oh, man, I wish I had my own cow. Yeah. Can we drink the urine for nutrition, uh, Maruk? <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so Maruk's not. Why should Maruk? Why would Maruk say no? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when the guest comes, you'll be like, "Ek glass pisa pila do or tang mere re." <laughs> okay, guys. Okay. It's been a wonderful morning, and I have to go play with my friends. Sounds horrible. Yeah. Maruk, thank you so much for coming on our show. Please come once wonderful. in a while, whenever you feel wonderful. free and yeah. bored. This is the last bastion for investig- uh, investigative journalism. <laughs> <laughs> we brought a line in the sand. Yeah. I had a great time. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye, right. guys.